Hello and welcome to the 60th anniversary special of Corrie's Good News. Tonight we are celebrating everything that we love about Coronation Street from the actual cobbles. Yes, we're not doing it from my bedroom. We're here on the cobbles to celebrate with you guys. So, what are we waiting for? Let's do it, let's run the titles. Hello and welcome to this very exciting episode and have we got a show for you. We are celebrating all things Corrie and how are we doing it? We're pitting our cast against each other to find out who the cleverest is. We've got Ali Mardell giving us our very own fashion show. But before we get into that, we need to address the elephant in the room. Or is that the chicken in the coop? Yes, evil Jeff Metcalf. He has Alakazabra for the final time. And I'm about to talk to Ian Bartholomew, Shelley King and Sarah Khan all about that episode. So, welcome to Good News. Thank you very much for joining me, Shelley, Ian and Sarah. We have seen the demise of Jeff Metcalf. The time has come to say goodbye. Um, obviously, initial reaction, Barty, that is the end of Jeff. You know, how does it feel to be involved in such a big story and a big moment for the show? It's been a fantastic ride. We all knew that Jeff was going to get his come up, didn't we? We all knew it was going to happen at some point. But, um, and so did I, but um, we weren't quite sure how. And it's very dramatic and rather exciting and fantastic. You guys haven't actually seen what you filmed yet. No. Do you want to take a look at what you guys have been filming recently? Uh, yes, please. Why Let's not? have a look. Bring it on. Me. That's me! No! No! He doesn't deserve it! He's beyond hell! Ma, I'm not! Come on! Can you stupid woman! No! Uh. Jeff! Don't look! That is the first time you guys have seen those clips. Yeah. Um, Shelley, talk to me a little bit about how it was, obviously, what I've seen there is a night shoot and a stunt. Yeah. What was it like being up on that rooftop? Scary. I mean, I hate heights, <laughs> so that was very... But we had some wonderful stunt people telling us how to... and keeping us safe all the time. You mean that time. wasn't you? No! Of course it was me! <laughs> I like to keep it a secret, though. Uh, anyway, um, no, um, we had some great people helping us. Um, it was still, It was still quite... Tiring because being on a roof like that, you do actually have to use muscles that, as a 65-year-old woman, I haven't used for a long time. <laughs> but anyway, there you go. Obviously, in the age that we live in now of COVID and social distancing, you guys um, actually got bubbled together, didn't you? Um, yes, we did. To, yeah. to work on this, we were tested, we were, we were checked every day to make sure everything was okay. Um, it was actually quite good. It, it was wet and it was cold and it was late at night, all night and your body clock goes completely out of kilter. So uh, it's a rather strange, surreal experience. I actually really enjoyed it. I live for that thrill. Um, I actually really wanted to be on the roof, um, for real, as opposed to the stunt roof. Um, but I've never had a stunt person before, so that was really exciting. Super Alia. This is where she comes into her own, isn't it? Super one, Alia, one... I like that. Can I get that on a badge? It was a very different way of working there with green screens and, and things, um, but we had a great crew, so it was fun. Do you know what? I think it really does show how much you guys have really enjoyed working together and you've made some really great TV. It has been quite the ride for Jeff and Yasmin. Well, you know, we started off, uh, Jeff and, and Yaz, as being really good friends and very funny. Um, we could have been a comedy double act at first. I think that was very important because we were really following the advice that, that, that various groups had given us. You do not identify an abu abuser straight away. So I think that was, it's, it's a gradual drip, 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 drip. A lot of people ask me, isn't it fun playing the baddie? I think if the baddie knows he's a baddie, then yes, I think it's probably a lot of fun. But Jeff doesn't know he's a baddie. He doesn't, he thinks his, he thinks his behavior is entirely normal and he's the victim in the whole thing. It was difficult coming into work every day, I have to say, to be horrible. To be horrible to somebody that I really like and get on with and trust and respect, you know. But the, the other side of that is that we both knew that it was an incredibly important story to tell. We both felt the responsi responsibility of it quite keenly. It's such a big celebration and 
We're all honored to be part of this show. Talk to me about how it feels to be at the forefront of the 60th episode. Exactly what you said. It's such an honor and it feels like a massive privilege as well to get one of these stories at such an iconic time for the show, the 60th. To be a part of what I've been watching ever since I was a little kid. And my mother, um, you know, was very excited when I, when I first, I came to Granada to film Jewel in the Crown, but she didn't care about that. She was very excited to know I was sitting next to Elsie Tanner. <laughs> and now, if, I think of my mum a lot because she'd be so proud, she'd be so proud now. The team that is Corrie, the family that is Corrie, um, and we're all so proud to be a part of it. But the bittersweet thing about this and about this episode is that we are losing a family member because although Jeff Metcalf has been terrorising our screens for three years, we actually quite like Ian, don't we? <laughs> so, Ian... Yeah. Speak for yourself. <laughs> three years of Jeff, three years on the show. How does it feel for it to have come to an end? Um, sad. Um, but at the same time... You know, that thing about it being a privilege, and, and the same as Shell, you know, I've been watching this since I was tiny. And to be here as a part of that um, very special celebration is, is, is very humbling, and I'm, I'm very proud of the work that, that we've all done, the writers and the directors, everybody have, have, has brought to this storyline. I've worked with some really fantastic people here. Um, all the crews are great, everybody who works behind the camera, but, you know, most of my stuff has been done with... Shelley and Sarah, and we've had a great time, and um, I've loved working with both of you, so thank you very much for making me so, feel so welcome at the beginning and uh, not shouting at me too much. Can I just say that it's been one of the best times and partnerships in my working life. Bless you. To be with you, to, to trust you, to have laugh with you, to cry with you, to have a glass of red wine with you. <laughs> Um, Only one. It's yeah, just the one. Just the, of course. It has been a fantastic ride and it's been a fantastic part. And I've worked with lovely people. So just keep watching, folks, because it's a great show. Guys, it's been a pleasure to have you. Congratulations on an amazing story. I'm sure there are still many twists and turns in the storyline. But thank you very much for joining me on Corrie's Good News. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. It's Thanks been awesome. great. My favourite memory was when... Jean Alexander, wonderful Hilda Ogden, left the street and we all sang together. Wish me luck as you wave me goodbye. That one. One of my best memories has got to be when the Pat Beale and storyline was on screen. You know, Connor was a lovely, lovely guy and had a, added a little bit of spice to the TV. The moment where Hilda Ogden opened the box with the glasses in that belonged to Stan. I think because there was so much love, she loved him so much and I think we all as an audience felt for her in that moment and it was just beautiful. Uh, I love the travel crash because I thought it was pretty epic and it was very gripping to watch. When I was growing up I used to really hate the Corrie theme tune because it meant that I had to go to bed quite soon but I love it now because I get to work with my favourite character which is him. Of course, I would like to reciprocate, but my favourite memories of Coronation Street are any scenes to do with Jack and Mira. Uh, I think my favourite memory of the, being in Coronation Street was, was actually working with Jack and Vera. And the scene was written by, by my best friend Stephen Malatrat, who was responsible for me being in the show. And Roy was searching for the ghost of Ivy Tilsley in the Rovers. And uh, I'm sure it's on YouTube somewhere, but it's brilliant. I'm very good at it too. Now, it's not that the Cory Bunch are competitive, but I have even met Jack P. Shepherd. So I thought it'd be fun to find out who is Cory's cleverest couple. So let's have a sit down and find out what could possibly go wrong. Our couples are here. Thank you very much for joining us. We've got Georgia and Charlie, aka Toya and Imra. We've got Dan and Peter, aka Billy and Paul. And we've got Jack and Julia, a.k.a. David and Shona. All you guys are going to have 10 questions and you're going to write your own answers down. There is going to be no discussing. Your work is to be done in private and silent. And then at the end, we're going to add both of the couples score together and we're going to find out who is the smartest Coronation Street couple. Question one, which Cory couple had the longest marriage? Does this mean single marriage? Because there's been a few that have been married several times. Does that... Is that cumulative or is it just one 
Solid one. I'm going to take one off. Oh, you don't on. count a divorce, do you? Even in Soapland. <laughs> Question two. What was the name of the racehorse bought by the Rovers regulars back in 1996? I wasn't born. <laughs> I wasn't born. Gee, God. Question three. An easy one. What was the name of Ken Barlow's first wife? Question four. Great question. How many different actors have played the character Peter Barlow? I don't know anything! Question five. What is Daniel Castlebank's character's name? I don't know! Question five. Tyrone's Greyhound was named after which friend's character? We've helped you out in the question there. Was it a boy or a girl, Greyhound? Oh, no, 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 no. Can't do any of that, I'm afraid. I've got, it. I've got this one. You don't have to worry about this one. Question six. Curly Watts gave his fiance Raquel what present back on Christmas Day, 1994? Question seven. What did Dead Barnes burn when his wife left him? <laughs> Who's Dead Barnes? Dead Barnes. <laughs> Dead Barnes? Des Burns. <laughs> Question seven. What did Des Barnes burn when his wife Steph left him? Okay. <clears throat> I'll repeat it for those that might have missed it the first time. What did Dead Bar <laughs> <laughs> Dead Barnes? Dead Barnes. <laughs> Question eight. Who got engaged at the top of the Blackpool Tower? Oh, I, I remember this one. Oh, I've just changed my answer number one. I'm just telling you all now for full full disclosure. I'm scrubbing it out. I've had a rethink. Just I'm not. It's it's been noted by the adjudicator. Okay. <laughs> Question nine: Who uttered the famous line "Woman, Stanley, woman"? And question ten: The last question: How many people watched Corey's most watched episode back on Christmas Day, 1987? So, question one was which Corrie couple had the longest marriage? Does anyone think they've got it? I think Jack I might. Is it Jack, Jack and Vera? Jack and Vera Duckworth, 50 <gasps> years. Yes, I changed it. Look, I changed it. Can you see? I changed well done. It. And, and we know you changed it because you told us you changed it. Yeah. Question two. Now, I think this was a toughie. What was yeah, the name of the race? <laughs> <laughs> What was the name of the racehorse bought by the Rovers regulars back in 1996? Bethy's Hotshot. Uh, uh, question three, which um, a lot of you did know one answer to, but maybe not the answer we needed. What was the name of Ken Barlow's first wife? Valerie Barlow, played ba by Anne Reed. Oh, I got it all wrong. I said Honor Blackman. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> How many actors have played the character Peter Barlow? Six. Seven. Oh. Yeah. I, said I went seven. five. I went five. Seven. That's more than Nick, then, isn't it? Seven. That is, that's a lot. That's, that's more than Nick Pilsley. Yeah. It is. Question five. We gave you a little bit of help with this one. Tyrone's dog was named after which friend's character? Monica. Monica. Wow. Yeah. Uh, well Not good. Dan, was it? You got it! You got it! You got it. <laughs> Question six. Curly Watts gave his fiance Raquel what present back on Christmas Day 1994? A star? It was a star. A star named after her. Oh, I said French lessons. <laughs> <laughs> Question seven. My favourite question of all. What did Des Barnes burn when his wife <laughs> Steph left him? Boat. A boat. boat. His boat. Yes. Oh. I tell you what, Julia and Georgia, this is going to be tight. Here's a fairly recent one for you all. Who got engaged on the top of the Blackpool Tower? Tyrone and Maria. Tyrone and Maria. I said Roy and Angel. Oh. <laughs> when you say relatively recent, it was. I think this might have been before you were born as well, wasn't it, Coles? <laughs> <laughs> Probably, yeah. Probably. Holly, what did you put? I put Tyrone and Maria. Yay! And I don't want to show the rest of my answers, but yeah. No. Oh, Jack, Roy and, Jack and Julia are getting nervous now. It's, it's nervous times. Question nine. Who uttered the famous line, woman, Stanley, woman? Hilda Ogden. Hilda Ogden. Oh, yeah. yeah, that was a good guess. 
And question 10, the last question, which could be the decider. How many people watched Corrie's most watched episode back on Christmas Day, 1987? Let's start off, Georgia, what have you gone for? I've gone too low, Coles. I've said 19 million, but I think it's probably more. I've gone even lower, but I've gone 17.8 million. Dan? I, I went for 30 million. Three what? zero. Wow. Peter? 18. Julia? 27 million. <gasps> Jack? I've gone 22. 20? 6.65 million. So the point Ooh. goes to Julia. <laughs> Roger, what did you get? I got seven. Seven. That's impressive. Oh, wow. Really okay. I got two. Oh, two. babe. Dan. <laughs> <laughs> One. One. <laughs> <laughs> Peter. One, two, three, four. I got four. Oh. Oh. <sighs> Julia? I got seven. Seven. Jack? I got three. Three. So that means the winners by one point and one point only with a whopping 10 out of 20 is Jack and Julia. <laughs> in second place, we've oh. got Georgia and Charlie with nine. And then last but not least, we've got Dan and Peter with five. Oh, wow. At least we know it was my one point that got us over the finish line. Wow. So I think I, I think I won it for both of us, didn't it? It's a I? liability. That's what yeah. it is. It's very <laughs> lucky to have you, Jules. Very <laughs> lucky. <laughs> well, thank you very much for joining us. And this was fun to find out who was the smartest couple in the Corrycast. My favourite curry memory, um, well it's got to be my very first scenes that um, were with these two amazing people and every time I go past this picture um, I nearly cry thinking about how brilliant they were. Um, yeah, I love you Roy and Hayley. My favourite curry moment is between Stan and Hilda and they have a little kiss and Stan says what does that lipstick taste of and she says woman Stan woman. Definitely the free Deirdre storyline because it was just iconic and Kirk Bride was iconic, Deirdre was iconic and yeah even people who didn't watch the show knew what was happening, everybody was talking about it. Mine personally is when Hilda Ogden finally said ta to the street and sang Wish Me Luck in The Rover's Return. When Hayley um, came out as a, and told, confessed to Roy that that she used to be a man, that, that always stuck in my mind. I always remember that moment, it's a fantastic moment in television. I must be about 15 or 16, and then when Hilda Ogden, her chimney fell down, and she had to go, she was gonna have to move out, and I was distraught. And I can remember, I, I wrote to Coronation Street to say, I personally would come and rebuild her chimney for her. So that's an abiding memory for me, cause, and I believed it all as well, and I loved Hilda. Right then, my favourite scene was when Steve and Lloyd had caught up with this lad who was being bad and Steve, trying to be hard, shook him and Lloyd went, that's right Steve, give him a good shake. That was my good day, I think. So if you think back over the past six decades, there is one thing that you can't deny and that is that us Corrie Lot are a fashionable bunt. Now over the years we've definitely set some trends, so I thought it would be fun to take a look back at the past six decades to see some of them iconic fashion statements. And who better to take a look back than our current fashion icon, Emma Brooker. Take it away Ali Mardell. I'm not even lying, I absolutely love this. All I need now is the ducks in the background and I'm set. <laughs> I mean, what's not to love? Come on. I just need a mop. <laughs> so now we've got Elsie Tanner, of course. Look at this coat and this hair. You see, I thought I had big hair, but gosh, she's topped it. <laughs> The 
make it the better, so I'm getting very happy with this kind of do. <laughs> Hilda was my favourite, but I think I might be a bit torn because look at me, the hair's just getting bigger and better, so I'm pleased. <laughs> now we've got Leanne Battersby, feisty back in the 90s. Don't mess with Leanne. <laughs> Well, I've loved all these styles and gradually, because now I'm playing Emma's grandma and making my way back to Emma, which I'm looking forward to. As much as I love Liz, I don't think I can quite pull this off, to be honest. I think Beth Callard is the only one that can pull this off. I'll leave it with her. Here I am in Emma, where I'm supposed to be, in my lovely pink as usual. <laughs> wow, thank you, Ali. Now, I have to say, I'm a massive fan of the Bet Lynch fashion. Now, it wouldn't be Corey's good news without the help of you guys, so we've got to get you involved. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I asked you to dress up as your favourite ever Cory characters and you did not disappoint. So, with some expert help, I'm going to go through them and give you a very own catwalk. So, Sally and Matthews, we have got 10 of the finest Cory character reenactments that you're ever going to see from At The Scalp on Twitter. Any guesses as to who that possibly could be? Well, it's easy. It's my ex-lover. It's Kevin Webster. I mean, the purple bomber jacket gives it straight away there. That is absolutely brilliant. Big Kevin Webster. <laughs> from At Wiggled Eyeliner 98 on name. Instagram. Is that Nina? Nina. Oh. Uh... Very good, Very yeah. Good. We've got Lucy Williams, who had an 18th birthday with a Coronation Street party theme. I'm saying Liz McDonald. And that's a Connor, because she's all in black, so it's bound to be a Connor. Which Connor is well, it? Well, I'm going to say Michelle. Carla. Carla. I mean, you're, right, you're, you're in the right family. Yeah. Who have we got here? But wait, Hilda Ogden. It is. A couple of Hildas. They're both Hildas. <laughs> So, a couple of builders. So Kate and Maisie. Who are they dressed up as? Oh, look. Gemma. With the pigtails. Yeah. Well done. And I'm going Nina again. Well done. 10 out of 10. That's so cute. That is impressive. We've got Craig247 on Twitter. Who could <laughs> that be? That's going to be Billy the Vicar. Billy the Vicar. I mean, there's <laughs> one obvious clue on that. Now, Very Craig good. really got in the spirit. Oh, did he? Really got in the spirit. <laughs> Who could That's a fabulous that bust, be? can I say? That's Raquel. Raquel. It is Raquel. Ah, oh, that's very good. Very good. So I'm liking the top knot. That's a good very effort good. from yeah. Craig. It really hat. is. So this is from Daniel McGower. And who is he saying he is? Okay. I know who this is. I think you should know. Who <laughs> I this do is. know who this is because I know both Dan and I know who's trying to be. It's Dirk. It is. Factory <laughs> regular Dirk. There he is. Next, we've got something from the Isolation Creations on oh, Twitter. Oh, very good. I've heard a they lot do about brilliant these. videos. Wow. Wow, well, that's. I mean, I, that's, I, that's a lot of effort, but who have we got? Well, we've easily got uh, Ina, Minnie, and Martha because it's so iconic, but that is brilliant. So the last entry from Nola and Isla is. <gasps> Oh, look at that. That's very, very good. Uh, That's very tiny. good. They're tiny. And who could that possibly be? Oh, I, but I know. Because the red anorak gives it the away. Red coat. And the bag. And, and the beige. That's Roy and Hayley. I've spotted one issue in the whole thing. Yeah. No Craig. <gasps> no Jenny. Fuming. But other than that, that's a good effort. That is brilliant. I'd, I, I, I'd be hard pressed to pick a favourite there. I think it might have to be Raquel. Do you think Raquel, yeah. big effort from Even Craig. though I love Roy and Hayley, but I think 
it was such a marvellous bust and yeah. such a marvellous kind of scrunchy on the thing. I think it has to be Raquel for me. They're all brilliant, I have to say, and, and thank you for getting into the spirit of things and, and sending pictures in, they're amazing. And next time there's someone's uh, Cory themed birthday, can we have an invite, please? Would be nice. And if you had to ask for my favourite memory, I'd probably say working with Annie before obviously she passed away. I think she was just the funniest person to work with and then obviously also working with Bev before she went on Anna Celeb. They were probably the best memories. My favourite curry moment is back in, I think it was the 80s, when Fred, Betty and Bet Lynch all went for a picnic around the lake and uh, the car ended up rolling into the lake and then in order to save them, Fred carries them out and he puts Bet Lynch smack down in a cow pack. Oh, my favourite curry memory has got to be Richard Hillman driving the plats into the canal. It's, that was, it just, it was literally car crash television. I really enjoyed the feeling storyline, just because I liked to see the way that it unfolded and also that he got his comeuppance at the end. I loved doing all the scenes with Roy Cropper when I did the storyline with uh, David Nielsen. Um, that was my favourite storyline and it was so much fun to film. Um, it had lots of different things, it had comedy, it had tragedy, and it was always different, it was changing all the time. So for me that was a particularly good storyline. So when I graduated drama school, I was you know, putting it into existence, like how much I really wanted, wanted to you know, get a part on Corrie. So I kept saying to the universe, I was going, you know, just give, give me a part on Corrie, give me a part on Corrie, and then I literally got an audition for it, so I was like, I manifested it. One of my favourite memories is working with legends every single day. Yeah, well, my favourite moment, I thought long and hard about this, okay, guys, and this, this. I loved it when Dev got it on with Deirdre. Or was it Deirdre got it on with Dev? Anyway. My sister was a designer at Rochdale College, and she loved how Bet Lynch dressed. So she designed these earrings, and they were like little toilets from dolls' houses, and she put a loop, loop, like, little loop through. So uh, she sent them off to Julie Goodyear, and on one of the episodes she was wearing them, and we were all in our living room going, yes! My particular memory is when Jack passed away in his chair, and Vera was behind him, meeting him, and they danced away into eternity. It was so beautiful. Audrey came in as a flirty piece who was anybody's virginity and I'm glad to say despite what you think she hasn't changed. She's had the most wonderful life starting with marrying the wonderful um, Alf, Alfie who really was the love of her life but she also flirted happily with Fred the Butcher, Mel Hutchwright, the rather devious wonderful poet so called and of course not forgetting wonderful Lewis. So I'm hoping that uh, soon that will carry on. Keep watching, because I'm keeping my fingers crossed there's more to come. Lots of love, lots of love. Mm. Bye. So that is just about all we've got time for. All that is left for me to say is a massive thank you to all of you guys at home, from all of us guys here on the cobbles, for joining us to celebrate our 60th anniversary. Now I want to get back in the Rovers for a pint of milk stout and raise a glass to Coronation Street, but I'm going to leave you all at home with this little treat. Coronation Street's all right. Mind, there's some you'll have to watch. Go on, Gail! But if I had my way, I'd just like to go like my mother did. Hey, that were a beautiful ending. Oh, lovely. She just sat up, broke wind, and died. Oh. 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 Come here, you! Come here! Leave it out, all right? Just leave it! I'm not a female by birth, right? But by choice. I hope you'll both be very happy together. Uncle Wes! Uncle Wes! You're my son. My job was and is to protect you. Oh, yeah, well, you made a mess of that, didn't you? Come on, babe. I'm hopeless, but I've got
got nothing. Oh, don't tell me there's three in there. There isn't three. There's four. Four! Hi, Kelly. Well, hello, Vince. Terrific to meet you. Ah! Dad, I'm gay. Thanks for all your help, OK? But where is family? Oh. So am I. I'm, I'm Daniel, I'm Tennyson. <laughs> Not the glove. No! I want to know where you've been and who you've been. Pals, you don't know the meaning of the word. What's that lipstick based off? Woman, Sam. Woman. Come on. Oh. My son's name isn't Tom. It's Clayton. Well, I you see, not everyone can be as popular in the family setup as I am. My grandson, well, he practically begged me to work in his garage. You lost Rory. <laughs> you lose Steve. Ah! Oh, oh, man. Miss you. Who's your money on tea? Oh, well, Eva's told us that she's got the reach advantage, but Maria's got the hand speed. You're not being talked about in this pub, love. You're not worth serving. Hello, Tracy. Hello, Sinead. Morning. Oh, Kelly. Would you mind if I did honest? Not guilty. Then you're soft in the head, the lot of you! And whatever you hear about me, just... Just remember that I will. Message deleted. I am! Power vested, I now pronounce you man and wife. It is! You ain't kissed <laughs> Him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Carry on. You know when Bates with a briefcase. No! I love you! No! Do I dress a bit tight? Give all the two dim you all together, I reckon. Some days we hardly see your knickers at all. It's a funny looking thermometer, this. It's rectal, but it's been through the dishwasher. So, Claudia, these are for you. <laughs> Audrey out. <laughs> <laughs>